Good morning and welcome back to Black Bear Forge. I thought we would get back to work on our little diamond element that we put on the end of a piece of half by one inch bar. And for that matter, I actually made two of these. A lot of people gave ideas of what they think they might use these for, like to see them go into, or guesses what I was making. And two is a hint, because I'm only doing two at this point. Lots of good ideas out there, and by the time we get to the end of this video, I think it'll be pretty obvious what I'm going to do with these, but I'll make sure I uh, let the cat out of the bag at that point. Now today, to add to that element, I'm going to take two pieces for each one of these, four pieces in total, and I'm only going to show one of these. You don't need to see this done four times. And I'm going to draw these out, same size material, half by one, so that's about 13 by 25 millimeter bar. And we're going to draw that out and just scroll it lightly. Do you remember the hook we did the other day that had the little spade finial in the middle and the scrolls on the outside? Very similar concept, and these will then forge weld on either side of this. Hopefully that makes sense. If it doesn't now, it should by the time we get to the end of the video. So I'm going to head over to the forge. I'm going to get these hot. Because we're going to do some forge welding, I'm going to let the forge run. So you're going to have to listen to a little bit of background noise from the forge today. And I'll try and talk over that as I explain what I'm doing. This is just a matter of drawing out a nice paper. Do I want it to be parallel or do I want it to taper in both directions? I think I want it to be parallel. At least that's what I saw in my head when I started this project. And drawing out over the horn moves material faster than drawing it out on the face. But you'll need to refine this at the face of the anvil. I'm going to want that to draw right out to a point. That's a little bit better. this together we're going to be able to forge weld up into here but we won't be able to do a lot of work right at the very top so you want your taper to continue down so you get a nice transition between where you're forge welding and where you have to quit so my taper here is probably about <clears throat> so my taper here is probably about six inches my anvil is five inches and I go just a little beyond that the big thing is to make them the same on all of the bars. I just want to kind of soften the edges where that scroll will be, but not down into the forge weld. Do, do try to keep this parallel. jig to start that bend. I'll probably finish this after I do the forge weld because I'll mess it up when I'm forge welding. I just want to be able to get that up there real nice and close for now. And you want two of those that match, or actually four because I'm doing two pieces. 
So if it's not quite the same, make the adjustment. So now that I have all of the pieces prepared and ready to forge weld, I'm going to go ahead and tack weld them together with the MIG welder so that they stay put. And I'm going to use as small a tack weld as I can get away with to make sure that weld doesn't show in the finished product. But this is kind of what I'm going for here. This is now one inch by inch and a half. When I'm done, I want to reduce this to a one inch square bar all the way down. And that's one of the reasons why I thin this through here so that when I do that forge weld, I don't have to try and bring this down to one inch right there. I've already reduced this material beforehand, so I don't have to work it as much right here by this end. Now there's a couple of approaches you can take to doing this forge weld. If you're working in a coal forge and working by hand, I think leaving them this long is really going to be problematic for you. I would, I would make that forge weld about two inches or so, just cut these off, tack weld them together, just forge weld that decorative element, and then forge weld that onto the end of a one inch bar. That's just a drop the tongs style scarf weld. We've looked at that a lot of times before. And if you're working by hand, that saves you a whole lot of hammering. And if you're working in a coal forge, it's only going to take a little tiny welding heat anyways. I think that's probably the way to go. It does involve a little bit more skill. You're probably going to have to practice that weld to be able to get it right. I'm working in a gas forge, and I have the luxury of a power hammer. That means I can take a long heat and get a lot of this up to welding heat at one time and I can refine the bar under a power hammer and reduce it to that one inch square quickly and efficiently. And I think for me that's the way I would normally approach something like this. If it gets any longer than this, I don't think I'd do that. If we're doing gate pickets or fence pickets, something like that, I think doing it the other way with a shorter weld and then a drop the tongs weld to put it on a long bar would be the better way to go. But I think for this, I'm going to go ahead and do it in the gas forge full length. And I'm going to go ahead and refine this under the power hammer. My initial welds will probably be at the anvils, so i got a little bit more control with a hand hammer. And if you're somewhere in between, if you're working in a coal forge but have a power hammer, or if you have a gas forge but you're working by hand, just decide what works best for you. I'm not presenting the only way to do this. I'm just showing you the way that I chose to do it today. So I'm going to go tack weld this, bring it up to welding heat, and I'm going to meet you back at the anvil. this. I'm using 20 mule team borax because it really penetrates and flows into the seam. Now because this is quite heavy, you'll get a long working time of welding heat. It's also a bit on the awkward side because it is heavy. I'm using a heavier hammer than I usually do. This is still light blows for something this big. It looks like I welded on this side, but not this other side. I broke my tack welds apart. So I'll turn this side up on the next heat. That's not a bad way to go. In light stuff, I would do it. establish the weld entirely at the end. But under the power hammer, this big stuff should work just fine.
of this I'm just drawing out. I'm not worrying about welding so much, so we don't want to do much drawing out. Below welding pieces up in here, you got to be careful. more than I'm going to need to if I have in mind for this. I don't need to really go any further. At this point we're just refining the, the whole piece. one inch dimension. Lightly knocking the corners off. combination of bending forks and scroll forks, whatever it is you've got to straighten all this out. It's just pretty normal for things to get wonky while you're working on them. We'll get another opportunity before this project is finished. Do a little bit more straight. speed sander polisher for this, not a regular angle grinder. It's not running anywhere near as fast as a normal angle grinder. This will clean a lot of that crushing force up. Even slow down once the grab to make sure you're in control. Well, we now have a pair of these decorative pieces, and this is pretty much done. It looks like they could use just a little bit of adjusting to make them look exactly the same, or at least close enough to the same that people won't be able to tell. But a hint on what these are going to be is right here. I went ahead and cut them to length. They're about 16 inches long, and in use, they'll be about this far apart. Any ideas? 
Well, these are going to be the front pieces for a set of andirons. If you're not familiar with andirons, they are what go in a fireplace. They have a support in the back that will hold a log, and then the front piece keeps the logs from rolling out on, into the living room and burning your carpet, or burning your house down as the case may be. And this will be a continuing series until we get it finished. We'll do at least one more just on these pieces. We'll punch a hole down here somewhere for that crossbar that the logs sit on and put a tenon at the very end for the feet to attach. And then do whatever adjustments, clean this up, and make these just exactly what we want for the finished front piece. Then I'll do the feet as one video. The part the logs sit on will be another video probably. And maybe assembly will be another video. So let's set four, five, six videos. We'll just see how it goes. I don't want to make them too long. But I think this is a very interesting thing. And you don't have to do what I'm doing. There's nothing that says these have to be and irons. If you wanted to make this the central element in a gate, or you want to use these as fence posts and have one every four feet with intermediates in there, make it smaller, use it for a tool handle for a set of fireplace tools. Really, it doesn't matter. This is just a decorative element, and I chose to make a set of and irons out of it. And as far as the approach to welding, like I said, if you don't have a power hammer and you don't have a gas forge, it might be better to make a little short weld in here, just a few inches, scarf that, weld that onto a one inch bar, or maybe onto a bigger bar if you're making a bigger set of and iron. Or if you're doing fence posts, you might want something inch and a quarter, inch and a half. It's just entirely up to what you want to do. I suppose you could even create this top element solid like this, cut it off and electrically weld that to a piece of tubing if you wanted to. I think that might be obvious that it was tubing, but if you needed something that was a little lighter weight, if you really were making fence posts and you didn't want fence posts that weighed 100 pounds a piece, maybe that's what you'd do with it. Anyways, that's all I've got for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, I would love it if you hit that subscribe button down there. Feel free to stick around, watch a few of the other videos. Of course, share the videos with your friends. If you'd like to provide financial support for the videos here at Black Bear Forge, there are links in the video description for both PayPal and Patreon. Those are merely donations. The content is free. In the meantime, I hope you have time in your day to get out to your shop, make something, but stay safe, wear your safety glasses, and we will see you for the next one.